Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about dry eye disease and some possible differential diagnosis we might have. You know, an estimated up to 40 million Americans suffer from dry eye, and that's a big number. Um, I, I often wonder, are they all truly dry or um, aqueous insufficient or, or evaporative dry eye? And more, the more that I look, especially at some of my dry patients who just don't respond to conventional treatments, I'm convinced that the corneal nerves are playing a role. There's two conditions that we primarily see in practice. One is where the nerves are neuropathic, or where they're, when they're firing when they shouldn't be. One is when they're neurotrophic, where they're not firing at all, or their, their firing is diminished. So if we interrupt that feedback loop, remember that the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve is V1 division sensory nerve of the cranial nerve uh, trigeminal. So uh, when that branch comes down, if there's some sort of damage along the way, we can go neuropathic or neurotrophic. So if you've got patients who are complaining a lot, they don't look that bad, the classic uh, pain without stain, be thinking neuropathic. Did they have some sort of surgery that could have led to this? Is there some sort of systemic condition that may make them more prone to that? Pain syndromes, autoimmune disease, could that be part of the equation? Uh, those are patients where if, you, if they have a lot of pain, have a lot of symptoms, they have, um, the wind causes pain, light causes pain, and you put a drop of preparacaine in and they feel a lot better, then that's going to be peripheral neuropathy. And you can probably help them somewhat by cleaning up the surface of the eye or addressing corneal nerves by, by treating the surface of the eye. If they don't respond to that pain at all, it's probably more central, and then you need to refer them to a pain specialist in all likelihood. The opposite of that, if you've got a patient who has a cornea that just won't clear up, they're not complaining that much, but the vision might be kind of crummy, uh, be thinking maybe the nerves are compromised, they're not working very well, maybe they're on the verge of becoming neurotrophic, and that's when you should be testing corneal sensitivity. The way that you do that, the way I'm doing that now, you can get a Cochet Bonnet uh, anesthesiometer for about $500. If you don't have that, you can get some floss or grab a cotton bud and just kind of twist the end of it till you get a fine thread there and then have the patient open their eyes and look straight ahead and just touch the surface of the cornea and see what sort of response that you get. Um, it's either going to be normal, diminished, or absent. And, and I would recommend testing normals to get a sense of what sort of response. Test a lot of people. It's, there's just a small learning curve to figuring out what's a normal response and what's delayed. We recall that uh, with age, corneal nerve sensitivity will decrease, and so it's going to be uh, somewhat decreased. But if these patients have had uh, cataract surgery, LASIK surgery, where the nerves have been cut, uh, if they have, are diabetic and they have peripher peripheral neuropathy, that could be part of the equation. So if you've got a dry eye patient and you're treating them with conventional dry eye treatments and they're not really responding one way or another, think about corneal nerves, take a closer look. I think that could be a big thing that, that uh, in optometry, if we can eventually image nerves more easily than we can now, I think we'll find a lot more of that. Thanks very much for watching.